All right, so as we've been reading and studying here, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 12 through 15, is our focal point uh, for, for this lesson, talking about a change in your brain. And the word says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's where we're striving to get. God, I want to measure up to be like you. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. That's the goal. We're talking about being no longer children, but growing into uh, the fullness of, of who God is and who he wants us to be. So one of the most effective ways that we do that is to bring a change in our brain. Because if I were to ask you, I think it's probably on your sheet, uh, what is most responsible ultimately for change? I think it would rest right here between your ears, your, your mind, your mindset. Uh, how you view things and and whether or not you're going to let yourself change. So today we're going to be talking about a change in the brain. Uh, and basically this lesson is all about um, God's word, getting the word of God into, into our minds. Because in reality, your brain must be engaged in order to grow. If, if there's no brain function, there cannot be any growth. That's true in the natural and, and it's also true in, in the spiritual. So if you're not changing you're not growing. Simply put, that's basically what it comes down to. If you are not changing, you are not growing. All of us, we've got to possess a willingness to change in order to grow. And sometimes that's hard. Sometimes we don't like change when we're going through it. Change can be difficult. It can totally upset your, your routine, your way of living, your, your everything, but it's vital. And, and in order for us to grow, we've got to possess a desire to change. We've got to be willing to do things differently. We've got to be willing to be guided. We've got to be willing for God to come along sometimes and kind of hit us on the shoulder and say, all right, let's go. Let's, let's step up. Let's, let's move on. Um, so we, we, we've got to be willing to change because, uh, simply put, if you're not changing, you're not growing. When, when we as Christians... When we first have an experience with God, um, we're eager to change what needs to be changed uh, immediately. We're, we're ready. God, I want to be like you. But, but as time and relationship goes on, some of you in this room have been serving God a long time. You can probably relate to this. Uh, the process of growth might seem harder. Uh, reaching goals in, in the kingdom of God might, might seem still far beyond reach. Sometimes that bullseye feels like, God, I just, I never feel like I'm quite getting there. Um, and, and so sometimes people can give up on the process of changing because they don't see changes immediately and right away. Um, and if you, if you give up on the process, you'll never reach the level of maturity and spiritual victory that God wants you to have. God wants you to reach this bullseye. Sometimes we don't want to get there ourselves. And the thing about God is he's such a gentleman. He's not going to force you. He's, he's not going to take you kicking and screaming to somewhere you don't want to go. So, so we've got to understand it's a process. And, and, and that's something that, that really stuck out. That phrase stuck out to me over and over in preparing for this lesson. You must engage in and trust the process. You've got to trust the process. God is taking you somewhere. And oftentimes it takes longer to get there than you are willing to spend. And so you just got to trust that process that, Lord, you're, you're doing something and, and I'm going to trust the process that you're leading me through. So when it comes to spiritual growth, uh, the secret to your success or the lack of your success is hidden in your, your daily routine. We're going to park on that thought, the daily routine, for a little bit. You know, what you do occasionally can make a difference in your life, but what you do every day can literally change your life. You know... There's a popular ideology right now, especially in the sports world, where people say, I was made for this. I was made for this moment. This was my time. Um, and it's as if they, they define their whole life value on one moment. 
on, on one election or on one promotion. And there's no doubt those big moments can change the trajectory of your life. But as a Christian, if all you're living for are the big moments, mm -hmm. you're going to find yourself frustrated. You're going to find yourself disappointed. And, and it's going to be almost like Brother Calvin brought out last week, that company that went from zero to hero right away. And when they got there, they didn't know how to handle it. There's a process you go through in the daily things, the daily things. And so it's the daily moments. It's the daily preparation that get you to that big moment. So I guess what I'm trying to emphasize is the daily work in the word of God is what's going to bring you where you need to go. The daily work in the word of God isn't always glorious and you don't always see results every single day. We could all be honest. There's times you read your Bible and, and something jumps out at you. And then that day you're like, man, I really needed that for that day. Then sometimes there's weeks that go by, you read the Bible, you're doing your part, but nothing really jumps out or it's not like you go through the day and you're like, yeah, I really needed that scripture today. Sometimes it seems like there's a long process before you, you really notice any growth or you really notice anything happening as a result of what you're doing to read and to study and to ingest the word of God. But just because you don't see the results doesn't mean God's word isn't building something and preparing you and, and moving you forward. Does that make sense? Yes. You don't always see results every single time you read the word of God. But what you're putting in you is life. And life will bring results when, when, we, when we get to the, to the point in the time that, that it can all come to maturity. So, so three aspects here of, of what we want to study here with a change in your brain uh, as we're talking about the Word of God. And, and this first aspect is kind of the, the focal point here, uh, is to renew your mind. Um, we, we want to constantly be in a, a process of renewing our mind. When I think of renewing my mind instantly, um, I go to Mozart, uh, the classical composer. I love Mozart, and I like to study to it. And at and, and, and times when life just gets so foggy and, and, and crazy, I can just turn that on and study, and it's like my mind is renewed. And sometimes what also helps is I go to a, a park in the woods and uh, get away from everything. And it's these times, sometimes my family members make fun of me because I need my think time, but it's these times when my mind can be renewed. And I leave those moments, I can think clearly, uh, I, can, I can handle life now, I can go through what I need to go through and handle my responsibilities. Why? Because I took a little bit of time to, to renew my mind. And maybe that helps some of you. You have things you do this similarly. But in this case, more than a natural sense, we renew our minds, of course, through the Word of God. That's why it's so important that we have a daily interaction with God's Word. To change anything in life, you must first change the way you think. And everything you do is motivated by what you spend time thinking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, you are what you think, right? Look to somebody close to you and say, you are what you think. You are what you think. Your, your thoughts contribute to your feelings, and then your feelings contribute to what you do. The process works the same every time. Your thoughts determine your feelings. Your feelings determine what you do. So if you determine your actions back to the starting point, it all starts with your thoughts. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, familiar portion, you'll recognize this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We could spend a lot of time on this scripture, but just to mention it and to move on, transform, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh, in the Greek, is the word for metamorphosis. Remember that process by which a caterpillar turns into a butterfly? Metamorphosis. Um, does it happen overnight? Does metamorphosis just boom all of a sudden? No, it's a process. When you're transformed in the renewing of your mind, it's a process. Now, this is a scripture I want you to get. If you don't get any of them else, I want you to get this one. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. 
I'm reading it from the New Living Translation because it has a key word here that I think is, is so important. Um, it says, I think you have it there on your sheet, for the word of God is alive and powerful. Mm -hmm. I want you to get that part. The word of God is alive. This book right here is alive. Mm -hmm. Right now it's inanimate as I'm holding it in my hand. But when I take these words and put them in my heart, there's life. Mm -hmm. There's life. And that just stood out at me so strongly. These words are life. And that's what Hebrews is saying. The word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. God's word has life in it. And when we plant the word of God in our hearts and leave it there, it releases life. Think about this. This is amazing to me. If you hold a seed in, your, in the palm of your hand or you set it on the table, um, it's just a hard, dry seed. And it will stay that way forever. You know, if we put a, a seed right there on that end table and don't do anything to it, it's going to stay there forever. It's not just going to all of a sudden start growing. But somehow, pop that seed out there in the grass, give it some water and some sunshine, and it'll activate growth. This Bible is a seed. All right. If I just leave it over here on the table and I, and I don't do anything with it, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to stay there, gather dust. But something happens when I take the word and I, and I dig it and I bury it right here mm -hmm. and I add a little water of prayer and study and think, it produces life. I can't explain the process. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but to me, it's stunning. It's amazing how this word is alive. And when we take daily time to put this life in us, it's not going to be void. It's not going to be a waste of time. It's going to bring about life in us. And that ultimately will bring about change to bring us and make us more like Christ. Just like when you plant a seed, a plant grows and fruit eventually comes as a byproduct of that seed, spiritual growth or change is the byproduct of God's word living and working in our hearts. Some people miss this simple truth because they're looking for a big one-time encounter with God that will instantly and effortless, effortlessly transform their lives. Some try to serve God for that, that big moment. God, if I can just get this one moment, you're going to change everything. It's going to be easy, and I'm going to get up from this moment and, and be forever changed. Well, we do have moments in God like that, but the truth of it is, is that we got to put in some effort. We've got to put in some work. Some are willing to spend hours praying for a miracle, but they won't spend 15 minutes planting the seed of God's word in their hearts. We, we don't just want to try to feel better now in a, in a brief moment, but the process, the process of getting in the word, the process of letting life flow through us is what will, will change us to be like Christ in the long term. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The big moments do come, but if all we live for is a big moment, what about all the other time? Is that going to edify us? Is that going to produce anything good in us? Well, we stay in the word on a consistent basis and it will bring growth because the word is life. I said it earlier, but I'll say it again because it's, it's so key. When it comes to spiritual growth, the secret to your success or the lack of it is hidden in your daily routine. What you do every day can literally change your life. Now, remember this. Prayer is important as water and fertilizer. But if there's no seed in the soil, you can water and fertilize all you want, but you'll never get any fruit. If we don't plant seeds in our garden... We go out there and we water it to death. Nothing's going to grow because there's nothing in there. Sometimes we expect God to take us and miraculously advance us and grow us when we haven't put anything inside of us. If we do our part, we can pray and expect God to do his part. If we take his words of life and we diligently and faithfully and consistently put them inside of us, and then we cry out to God, God, change me. God can be like, all right, because you've got life in you. You've got seeds you've already planted inside your heart. Now I can take those seeds with the water of my spirit, and I can change you, and I can elevate you, and I can grow you, and I can take you somewhere. 
Not to say that we're not going to have supernatural moments that we don't expect or that God's not going to come in at times when we're not expecting it. But the point I'm trying to drive home is we don't expect God to take us from here to there where it's all God doing the work, where it's all on him. God, I'm just going to sit back and relax, and I don't really need to study my Bible. I'm not going to do that hard stuff, but, but I want you to take me from here to there. God's under no obligation to grow us if we're not willing to put in the work, if we're not willing to take these seeds and put them inside of us. It's not just pastor's responsibility to get this word in your heart. It's yours. It's your personal responsibility. And so that's, that's the part we want to understand. If there's life in the word, I want to get as much of this life inside of me as I can, because that's what's going to ultimately help me to grow and help me to develop. You know, the, the farmers, they don't plant just one or two corn seeds. They litter that field. They want it to come up in every square inch full of corn. Well, if we just litter our lives full of the word of God, it's going to produce an abundant harvest in us, and it's going to allow us to grow because his word is life. They, there are days it doesn't feel like it. There are days it feels like, Lord, this seed isn't doing any good. There are days we get up from reading the word and go through the course of our day and we're like, what did I read today? I don't even remember. But nevertheless, you're, you're engaging in the process. And that seed is invisible. It's underground. You don't see it working. But one day a little sprout comes up because you're doing the necessary things. So renew, renew your mind, renew your mind continually, daily in the word of God. Don't discount your daily activity of, of, of focusing in on the word of God, because think about it. You know, they talk about this in investing all the time. If you, you know, start investing when you're 25 years old and you do so much per year, you know, by the time you're 60, you'll be a millionaire. They talk about that. Well, think about it in terms of the word. How much can we can we change if we invest the word of God into our lives every single day? Think of that over the course of a lifetime of 30, 40, 50 years. Think of where you'll be in, in the kingdom of God when you make that kind of investment in the word of God in renewing your mind over and over and over. Secondly, we, we want to not only renew our mind, but we want to abide in the word. In John 15, verses 7 and 8, in the New King James, Jesus speaks, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So will you be my disciples. Look at those first 12 words or so that he speaks. This is so key. He says, If you abide in me, and my what abide in you? Words. words. He didn't say here, my spirit abide in you, or faith abide in you, or peace abide in you. He said, my words. What's he talking about? He's talking about the word of God. Okay. He's talking about the things that he has spoken, those words that will never pass away because they're life. So we abide in Jesus. We do our part to get into his presence and to, and to live and to dwell in him. But we make sure his words are abiding in us, that we're taking these life-giving seeds and, and, and abiding inside of us. When we do that, that will help us to be effective, growing Christians. So let's get practical here for a little bit. How can we abide in him and how can we let his words abide in us? Well, uh, four quick points on it. Number one, you got to read it. <laughs> You can't have the word inside of you if you don't read it or perhaps listen to it. Uh, what's your strength? What's your, your way of, of absorbing information? Some people are, are more audio learners. Some are more visual. I'm visual. If I see it, I'll remember it a lot more than if I hear it. So find your way to ingest the word of God and get it into you. Uh, read it. Get it into you. Then the second point, the major one, I think, meditate on it. Think on it. Take some time to interact with what you've just read and let your mind begin to think on it. That's where you really make connections. From a teaching standpoint, they, they teach teachers that you want to take information that people don't know and connect it with something they do know. And when you do that, they're a lot more likely to remember that bit of information. You ever met somebody for the first time? Hey, what's your name? Oh, I'm Jason. What's your name? Bill. Nice to meet you, Bill. And you go do something and five seconds later, 
I forgot his name. What's his name? I'm too embarrassed to ask him because I just he just told me I want to. You know, you ever been there? Yes. Of course. Well, connect Bill to something you already know. Oh, Bill's wearing black dress shoes just like I have on. Okay, black dress shoes, Bill. Black dress shoes, Bill. Okay. Oh, that's the guy with the black dress shoes. That's Bill. You connect his name, new information to something you already know. He's wearing black dress shoes just like mine. You made a connection that's going to allow you to remember that so much better. Mm. That's why when you think on the word of God, you can make connections in your mind. I know, you know, all of this is practical. I live in the practical. God's spirit can oversee and overshadow anything practical. But this is something helpful for you maybe, that when you think on the word of God, when you take time to make connections in your mind with what you just read, it's gonna stick. And we gotta do some things to try to get the word of God to stick in our lives, mm -hmm. to be responsible. That's what this is about. God's putting responsibility on us to grow. It's not time for us to sit back and say, God, okay, it's your job to get me there. No, God is saying it's your job to engage in the word of God so you and I can get somewhere together. We need to read the word. We need to think on it, meditate on it. We need to pray it. Pray the scriptures. You're never more in the will of God in prayer when you pray the word of God. And then we need to live it. We need to learn how to apply what we hear in Sunday school, what we read in our devotional, what we hear in the preaching during a service, how to live that out, and how to act it out. Um, and so that, that's how we can, we can abide in God and his words can abide in us. We read it, we think on it, we pray it, we live it. Basically, just immerse yourself in the word of God uh, and it's going to hold. Just like it takes time for seeds to germinate, the effects of God's word changing us effectuate over time. It's a process. It really is. You wouldn't plant a seed and then turn right around and dig it out because you know that's pointless. I got to give that seed a little bit of time. Neither should you grow impatient with the process of God's word changing you. Just trust the process. Trust the process. Spiritual growth comes when you consistently let God's word fill your mind so they can shape your thoughts and actions throughout the entire week. The material I read said, don't be a casual reader of the Bible. I'm grateful. I don't think many of us are casual readers of the Bible. I think we're consistent readers of the Bible. Read it, then think about what you've read, pray scriptural prayers, and keep looking for ways to apply his word to your day-to-day -day situation. Here's a phrase that's really cool. What you look at the longest will make you the strongest. <laughs> What you look at the longest will make you the strongest. That makes me want to look at this more than anything else because I want to be strong in the word of God. We all know if we invest our, our senses in ingesting ungodly content, what's that going to produce? It's not going to produce anything good in us, right? If our problems and our anxiety is always at the forefront of our mind, all I can think about God is what's going wrong and this and that and what good will that do? But if you make God's thoughts, your thoughts, his words will abide in you. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 in the New King James tells it to us like this, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I think we're all, we're all adults in here, and I think all of us know not every thought you think is your own. Not every thought that comes into your mind is from you or from God. There's an adversary whose battlefield is the mind. And so the scripture is telling us you've got to bring thoughts into the captivity of Christ. In other words, you can tell your thoughts, get out of here. You can tell your thoughts, uh uh, not giving place to you right now. You know, God's moving during altar call and you're hungry and ready to go. So you're ready to grab your keys and walk out. In that moment, you tell those thoughts, no, no, I'm not giving in to this thought in this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you get into a, a, a tense moment with somebody else and you're ready to just, just let them have it. But in that moment, you bring that thought under the obedience of Ephesians 4, to forbear one another, right? All the time, we're taking our thoughts and we're saying, uh-uh, I'm not giving place to that thought. 
we bring it into the authority and obedience of Christ. And so therefore, you can choose what dwells in your mind. And, and that's, um, you know, probably easier said than done, right? Uh, but, but that's a way that we can work together to grow, is to, to understand, uh, I need to bring these thoughts into their rightful place. I like to often pray that in pre-service prayer. God, anything that, that I think that would be a distraction or, you know, my, my body hurts today because of work or I'm tired, I'm going to put all of that down here in second place so I can put you in first place. We put some things down under the obedience of God so that what's best can rise to the forefront uh, and, and can be able to, to have its way. So we, we do that with God's word. We try to give it the precedence and the priority. We try to put it above everything else. And when we do, um, that's giving place to what is life, to that life-giving flow. Um, and when the need arises, the life-giving word of God is going to work for you because you've made it a, a, you've made it a priority to keep the word fresh, fresh in your mind. Then, then, then lastly, uh, we find stability from the word. Uh, God's word makes us stable and solid uh, and sure. Um, have you ever noticed that some people uh, believe one thing one day and then another thing or something different the next? Uh, they're they're kind of like a, a leaf blown in the wind, you know, um, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Uh, you see it out in the in the church world, you know, when there's popular doctrines that, you know, that move this way and sway that way and, uh, and so on. And if you study it, you know, there's, there's a lot of different uh, movements that, you know, we could go into them, but, but I'm not going to. Uh, but, but people that don't have roots, that are just flowing from this to that, whatever's popular. Um, but we understand that um, that kind of living brings instability. That makes somebody unstable. It's like a, a tangleweed, tumbleweed rather, blowing in the wind versus a tree that's rooted down and that stands strong in the wind. Um, those, those people are, are like the man that, that James talks about in chapter 1 verses 7 and 8, um, and they're plagued with the inability to receive what they need from God. Uh, when, when, you're, when you're unstable, you're not able to receive what you need from God. There's something to be said about stability and consistency uh, that keeps you connected with God where, you know, as our pastors teach us, you don't even really need to ask God for your day-to-day -day needs because you're so connected and stable with him. It's just, it's just flowing to you because of the connections you've made. Stability. Um, any Christian can grow and become stable by integrating God's word into their hearts and minds. I love that phrase. Any Christian, you, me, anyone who's willing can grow and become stable by integrating God's word. How, how can you better integrate the word of God into your life? What are your ways of, of succeeding uh, in, in, in the things of life? How can you, how can you put God's word uh, into those ways of succeeding? Like I said, I'm a visual person. I like to learn visually. So I, I find a lot of help in when I've heard a message taking notes so I've got it, but then I like to read them again and make little uh, Cliff's notes, if you will, for a way to keep the word before me, to integrate it into my mind. Because it's so easy, if you don't control your thoughts, they're gonna go every which direction, you know? They're gonna fly this way and that way, but, but what are the things you can do to better integrate God's word into your life, to, to keep it before you? It was so cool at the beginning of last year when we were memorizing scripture together and the Jones family would sing songs uh, and, and share several of those. They were integrating God's word. Uh, and, and I'm sure you guys can pick up one of those melodies and, and, and you know, you may not have practiced it for months, but it'll come right back because that was a way of integrating the word in a strength that, that they have. Uh, and so, so think about that. I guess let that be your homework assignment. God, how can I integrate your word in a better way not just what i always do but but what can i do to integrate the word of god um, in a better way romans chapter 10 verse 17 says to us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god we don't have to settle for double-mindedness when faith and stability can be ours 
when we hear and we receive the word of God. We read it earlier, Ephesians 4.15 uh, says that we should, we should grow up in all things into him who is the head. God's directive for us always, but especially right now, he's putting emphasis uh, on, on growing up. It's time to take some steps forward in your maturity and in you, your level of responsibility to grow and to, to put those things in place that are, that are going to help you and help you succeed and become more like him. I remember as a boy, a couple of times I would ask my mom, say, mom, is it hard being an adult? And, and I don't remember what she told me at the time, but we get a lot of laughs now where she'll look over at me now as we're adults and she'll ask me, is it hard being an adult? And uh, like, yeah, it's not easy. Um, but we, we laugh and we joke about that. But growing up is hard. It's, it's not the easy thing to do. Immaturity is easy, but maturity is hard. But can I tell you this, the more you put into it, the more you invest in it, the more you make it a priority, oh, the rewards that come uh, from that process and, and from that. And I think that's what, what God is trying to, to help us understand is go through the process. It may be difficult sometimes, but man, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. You're not going to remember any of the hardship when you're chillaxing in your mansion in heaven. It's going to be worth it all, every single minute, every single moment. Don't want to be unscriptural. I know we're going to work in heaven, but it's not going to be like down here. There's going to be pleasurable moments all the time, I'm sure. So we, God's command is for us to grow up in all things unto him who is the head. Be encouraged today to understand that uh, God would not tell you to grow up without providing you a way to do it. If his command for you is to grow, he is going to provide a way for you to do it. He's already got it all mapped out and all worked out. He's going to help you get there. He's going to help you reach the prize and reach the goal. And of course, the way, one way that we grow, one way that we become more like him uh, is through renewing our minds and letting God's word uh, abide on the inside of us. So if we desire godly change, which I believe we all do, um, and, and we desire to bear fruit in a greater sense, then, then I encourage you today, make a fresh and a new commitment um, to put God's word first and foremost in your life each and every day. Each and every day. For it's time to grow up. Colossians 2.7 uh, from the Living Bible Translation. I like the way it says it. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him, from God. See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. That says it well. How do we let our roots go down and draw up nourishment? Well, through, through his word, through these seeds of life. Uh, and the more we invest in it, the more it's gonna bring forth everything we need to grow, to become strong, to become vigorous in this truth that we're taught. Uh, and, and all of us together, we're going to reach that prize. We're going to reach that bullseye. Because if that's God's destination for us, and we do what he's calling us to do, I believe we're going to reach it. And it's all going to be for his glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. So no longer children, adults. Let's continue adulting in our faith and uh, growing forward in, in all these ways that God is challenging us. And put a fresh emphasis uh, on the word of God. For, for this is life. I don't want to let this seed just be hard on a table, but God let it break into the soil of my heart and, uh, and grow richly, abundantly. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you for the word of God today. We thank you for giving us access to the Bible. We thank you for allowing us, Lord, to receive preaching and teaching God on a, on a regular basis. And we thank you, God, for a call and a challenge to just continually put the word of God at the forefront of our minds. We ask you, Lord, help us, every one of us as individuals, Lord, to better integrate your word. God, there's many adults sitting in this classroom that that's their life story. They've integrated the word of God on a daily basis. But Lord, however we can do it better, however we can do it, Lord, in a way that is pleasing to you to answer this call of growth, that is our desire. And we pray that you would help us to do so. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 